Hi. It's still the 16th of October and this is a little video about what's happening in my big greenhouse. I've done a video about the small greenhouse with all the plants that are in the ground. Um, this is the, the, the big one where I've got most of the stuff in here is in pots. This is this is the greenhouse where I do all of my, my sort of seeding, my seedlings. Um, I'll give you a little, little bit of a tour. Um, I've done a little bit of experimentation as well in this greenhouse throughout this year. Um, I've grown everything from butternut squash to um, really, really, really bad aubergines, which didn't turn out well at all. Um, I had tomato plants in here that did a hell of a lot better than expected. Um, so it's, it's been a story of, of success and failure, but it's only my first year, so give me a break. Um, so I'm gonna, um, I'll just show you what's in here now. This is late in the season, so we're in autumn, so everything that you, you'll see in here is probably gonna stay um, for a good little while yet. We're hoping that the stuff that's in our trays over here is gonna, is gonna maybe last at least through the autumn, possibly into the winter, um, if we if we look after them. Um, some of the stuff's already started to die back. We've got a chili plant here that's nearly ready to go. We've got a couple of um, interesting squash plants, one of which is doing well, and one of which has started to notice the chill. But we've got some squashy type things on them at the minute, and I'll show you them as we go. So, um, first off, turn it this way. No, I won't turn it this way. I don't know how to work this phone. Right, first off, <laughs> what we're going to do is I'll stop this video and then I'll make another one and I'll tag it on at the end of this one. So here we go. This is um, just a wide view of everything in the greenhouse. Um, we'll, we'll talk you through everything that's in here. Um, left to right. I've got some seedlings still going in the background there. I've got some seedlings on the ground. Some of them are going to go outside and some of them are just spares for things that are either in the trees or in the small greenhouse which um, I've already shown you. So we'll start here. We'll start. We'll go left to right um, and work our way around clockwise. Um, starting off here with our with the last of the jalapenos. So um, I had six of these plants throughout the year and oh, they they were good and bad. A couple of them were really bad and didn't grow very well at all. They, they, they were just yellow from the, the off basically. And um, some of them that went um, where the leaves started falling off. I mean, this is late season, so you'd expect this sort of thing, you know, getting into the autumn. But I had some of them that went like that in the middle of the summer and leaves started falling off and I don't know what caused that but we'll, we'll keep an eye on that next year. That's possibly the compost I used. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so there's quite a few chilies on that. I'm going to see if they'll ripen up. I doubt they will. They'll probably have to just get taken off green. Um, which isn't a bad thing because all the ones that I had before are all, are all pickled up up the road in the fridge and I've sliced up a few of them in there. And there's some meals and things. Um, next to that, we have, as you can see, you can see the squash there. This is a a variety called Trombo Trombo del Benga, and it's a, a zucchetta rather than a zucchini. So um, it's sort of half. I say autumn squash. You know, you get like summer squash, you get winter squash. Summer squash is like say your courgettes. Um, winter squash, like your butternut squash type things and this one is for the autumn, believe it or not. It actually, it grows, I mean, these were planted in August, so late summer and we've got a couple of them on and as you can see it's still in the good place, it's, it's actually growing very well. I mean, I'll remind you of the date, it's October 16th today. Um, so that one's been grown for a while. Hopefully we'll get something off of that. The other one in the corner, by contrast, seems to be growing well at the top. It's still doing its business. Um, it's got some nice fruits on it that have started to flower, as you can see, but you might see in the background there the leaf. It's actually started to notice the chill a little bit, so this one will probably have to come out. 
very sinuous. In fact, there's like a mould on there. Yeah, so I'll leave it a little while. I'll, I'll trim back these leaves and we'll, we'll see if we can ripen up that fruit and see what happens. Um, moving on. These are rapini. It's a kind of broccoli, also known as rab. I've stuck two of these in, in the pots. I've got two plants outside that are just bolting continuously. They, they, I don't know why. <laughs> and you've got to be really quick to grab the to grab the heads off of these because they're they're only yay small, so about the size of my thumbnail. The heads, um, the length of my thumb. You will cut them the length of my thumb, but the, the actual heads themselves are about the length of my thumbnail. Um, and you need quite a lot of plants if you want to get a meal out of it. So I've got. I've got six plants in here and two outside, as I say. The ones outside, you, you can't get enough heads out off of them because there's only two of them um, to make a meal. Um, but they're nice in a kind of salad. You can cook them or, or just put them in, wash them and put them in salad. They're very tasty, just like, um, I'd actually like to try them in a coleslaw, to be honest. They'd, they'd be quite good. Um, the one here, as you can see, look at the colour contrast here. You've got ones that are these are almost yellow. This is kind of like what happened with the, um, the chilli plants that I had in the same compost. So I'm thinking there's a lot of this nitrogen. There's not enough nitrogen in this compost. And um, um, this is, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's, I think it's actually, it's got, um, it's a uh, Levington, is it? I don't know. I don't want to slander anybody. Um, it might not be Levington. So apologies to the Levington people if it's not, but um, maybe it's just meant for a different purpose and it's not meant for these, I think, or, or the chilies. It's possible it's just for um, certain plants that I didn't grow on them. So it might all be my fault, but again, we'll try next year. This, the, these ones are just in, um, this is spent mushroom compost. And these two, and so are these, it's all spent mushroom compost. Um, and everything seems to be growing well in that, indoors and outdoors. These beds that you see outdoors under, under fleece, they're all spent mushroom compost. Um, and everything seems to be thriving. Um, up on the table, new growth over here. We've got, uh, oh, oh, wow, okay. We've got some spring onion coming through. Those are white Lisbon spring onions. That's them just kicking through today, yay. Okay, so. I was getting worried about them, that they weren't going to come through. But at least we'll get them. They, those are um, overwintering spring onions, so we'll put them in the now and we'll be able to harvest them in the spring. Um, if we leave them into the summer, they'll, they'll, they'll bulb up. They're a kind of spring onion that, that bulbs up a little bit, so um, there's more feeding in them. That should be... I'll do that with some of them and, and just harvest the rest of the spring onions. Outdoors, I've got, I've got tons of spring onions outdoors, um, but they're all different varieties. So it's, we've got Guardsman, we've got Lilia, and we've got uh, a variety called Redbeard, which are bunchin onion, bunchin spring onion. So there's plenty of them. We'll see what happens with them. But this one was recommended, and um, the the white Lisbon was recommended, and so we're going to give that a go. Next, that over here we've got radishes. These are um, multi sown as you can see. There's quite a lot of little seedlings in each one. Um, these are called uh, black Spanish radishes, and they're, um, as the name would suggest, they come out black, very white flesh, but very black skin, and they can be used cold in salads or cooked, and I've never cooked a radish before, so um, I'd like to, I'd be interested to find some recipes for that, if anybody's got any, stick them in the comments, come on, stick some links. Up here we've got more of the red ruby kale, as I said, this is the one that we've we've kind of picked a couple of leaves off of that um, and they were very very good these went in before the ones in the other greenhouse and they were very small they were very very small when we put them in there I don't about that with just one leaf and they're thriving in there which is awesome next to that we've got another tray this is um, Neo de Toscana kale and it's quite late for this now I think I think I may just put these in pots in the greenhouse and keep them in here because if I put them outside I can't adequately protect them um, from pigeons so they'll probably get eaten through the winter by pigeons 
So I'll probably put whatever comes of this in pots in here and keep them safe. Um, and we'll see what happens. They're, they're really nice plants. I've got two of them outside. One of them actually has been eaten by a pigeon and the other one is under fleece with a lot of other plants. But that fleece is going to have to come off at some point So um, because they're getting very big. Um, but they're they're all overwintering plants so they should be okay without it. Okay, let's move on to the trees. We've got six more trees here with a variety of things in them. We've got... Um, we have got... And this one... We've got golden frills, mustard, that's the one that I said more, probably more um, kale than mustard. And that's what they look like when they're small. I mean, how nice is that? They're really nice. You could pick these leaves, the now probably. There's more leaves come through. So you just pick the outer ones as you go, the ones that get big. If you pick them at that size, though, they'd be very, very spicy indeed. Next to the, that, we have, this is an, another variety of kale, that's the red ruby. Over there, a red river, sorry, kale. This is a variety called KX1, which is another salad kale like that one. Although you can let it get big um, to, to eat. I've never grown it before though. I'm just going by what it said in the packet. It's slightly different. The red ribble kale seems to have a lot more, a lot more teeth. And it's sort of larger than these do. These are more like oak leaf shape. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to tasting those when they get a little bit bigger. They're very attractive plants as well. There's more in the binner. I'll probably keep these ones this size. So I'll probably harvest them like that. Chop them and keep the, the small leaves intact so as you go back. Because I like the, the idea of them being that mustardy spicy way. Um, more of them there. There's more over here that I've let get a little bit bigger. But we'll get to that in a minute. Next to them we've got um, this wild rocket. This is more of World Rocket. These have just been planted in the last few days, so we'll give them a chance. This compost here, this is just Miracle Grow um, compost um, that I thought I'd, I'd try out. There's a mixture of compost here. We've got, obviously, we've got the spent mushroom compost. Um, this is the that spent mushroom compost that the kale's actually germinating in, so that was a bit of an experiment in itself. But um, moving on. Next to that, we've got, this is winter purslane. I'm growing some of this in a greenhouse. There's a, quite a lot of it outside, which is where it should be, really. Um, so this is, again, this is just experiment. We'll see how it grows in here. Um, I'd like to actually try and keep them small. Keep, keep these small and just put these little leaves into, into salads and mix them through. Quite nice, as you can see, but fingernail-sized leaves at the minute. They get bigger, we'll get to about that. You know, there'll be a bit of spread in here. There's probably too much in this in this tree for what's going to happen. This one over here, we've got more uh, mustard, different kings. This is, um, I can't remember what this king's actually called. It's That's the one that we've got in the small greenhouse in the ground that there was one left over. The Matsuoka one. Um, this is another king that is very it's similar to that one. It doesn't have the veins. You see that one's got quite purpley veins in it. This one doesn't have the veins, it's just very green. They can grow large. They can grow large. They can grow big leaves like the um, like the nine-headed bug. They can grow big leaves. But um, I'm going to try and keep, like I say, everything in the trays in here, I'm going to try and keep small and just pick leaf by leaf and see how long they last, basically. Behind those, this is more Mizuno. It's a different variety to the kind in the greenhouse. That's normal green Mizuno there. This is pink Mizuno. You can see why. See the little pink stalks. Um, so see what see what that's like as well. That's the first time going that. These three came from um, rare seeds in America. They came from um, the place that gave us the little Tom Thumb seed packets for free. So um, they're very nice. Very nice. Check out their website if you can get it to work. They've got some very nice stuff. Very nice heirloom varieties of things and things from all around the world. So. Where we're trying out such rareseeds.com. You can go there. Um, moving on to the next one. This is more green batavia lettuce like we've got next door in the small greenhouse. This one's smaller, but it's got just as many leaves. We could probably pick baby leaves from that now as well. Um, these ones sort of were planted before these ones. These were kind of later ones, additions. Next to that, we've got golden frills, mustard, 
which again is that one when it gets bigger um, another one at the back and next to that the bigger Maduna so the contrast the leaves never change in these you know they get the, the ones outside are probably like a foot a foot long maybe more and they don't change they just keep this the same shape they look the same they're very slender very I mean if I probably snap one of these off for you you can hear the crunch you hear that they're very there was no effort at all to take that off they're very um you know same brittle leaves but they're very very slender very tasty a very nice plant as well mm. very tasty as well this one here more red frills mustard more nine headed bird mustard and more mizuna these are all going to stay but the mizuna looks a bit different when it's in the um when it's in the trays than in the ground um, the ground gets a bit paler it likes it in here moving on to this one we've got more wild rocket more um of the cello spinach and more Lola Rossa lettuce, so we'll keep them very small as well. We'll just pick the, the leaves off of them as they go. This one here is all sorrel, so you recognise it. The, the leaves kind of buckler shaped. And buckler is a small shield for anybody who doesn't know. Um, and these are spinach, little spinaches that I just planted the other day just to take up space. So that's basically that. The only other thing to show you in here is these are leftover lettuces. These will probably just get composted now. Just they're gone yellow. Where are nutrients? This one here is a a crust part lettuce, and this one here is a is red iceberg. It's an iceberg lettuce. There's a few of them planted outside, so um we, we don't need any more. There's no space to put them anymore anyway, so they'll probably get composted now. These are all winter chicory next door. So these are all um, red chicos, these are all radicchio types. Um, I don't know where I'm going to put them. Um, I've still got space to put a new bed in. I don't have any compost, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. I'll probably manage to squeeze these in somewhere. But um, watch this space, I'll make a video about planting these. Um, these are late season ones, so these ones probably, they'll prefer the cold to be in, in, in the 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 greenhouse um more stuff there there's the uh that's katsuona mustard there you go katsuona mustard i found the label for it yeah uh, anyway down here is all the spares from the small greenhouse so these again these are going to end up composted because we're not going to need them everything's going really well through there um so they'll, they'll, they'll get composted and the trays added to the tray pile. So that's the tour of the, the big greenhouse. And um, as you can see, still a lot going on. Again, remind you the date, it's October the, the 16th. Um, and we've still even got some squash going. So come on people, all those people are pulling, pulling the black tarp over. Stop and think. Um, I'll make another video outside and show you what's going on outside, what's got on the way out and what's what's going to happen next. Um, and hopefully, uh, um, I don't know, help somebody out or give somebody the impetus to, to help me out and suggest things to me if they think I'm doing anything wrong or if, I'm, um, if there's something else that I could try to keep this going all year round, obviously except for January <laughs> so um, yeah that's all for now stay safe and I'll see you next time